The birth of modern Thessaloniki begins with the complete reconstruction of its center after the fire of 1917. Before that, the Ottomans had attempted to modernize the city, but this remained unfinished. Following the liberation of the city, a plan for the overall renewal of the center was implemented during a period of intense effort to modernize the new Greek state. This plan was based on designs by Hebra, a French architect and city planner. Institutions such as city planning, horizontal ownership and the general building regulation came into existence as a direct result of the experience of Thessaloniki. Modern architecture was introduced to Thessaloniki in the period between the two world wars through the school building program. The school complex at Hagia Sophia shows that the architect Mitsakis was still influenced by the neo-Byzantine aesthetics of Hebra's proposals. The Parthenogogio Girls' School was already a completed modern synthesis with typological clarity, full volume formation and dynamic organization of the continuous openings. The Italian Royal Academy is impressive because of its Italian rationalism. The road intersection at Vazari stands out with the symbolic separation of the corner block by means of visible brickwork. The Piramatico School is a unique building where the transition from the rationalism of modern architecture to an approach to the local spirit is clearly discernible. The Piramatico School constitutes a rare combination of local and international features. Modernism in Thessaloniki finally prevailed during the first decades after the war. The School of Agriculture and Forestry, designed by the architect Mitsakis, is the only example of his proposals for the university that was completed. It stands out due to its austere simplicity of expression, with its clear openings, absolute rationalization of arrangement, and imaginative level changes. The Archaeological Museum is possibly the maturest work by the architect Carandinos. The exhibition areas around the atrium and the independent gallery of the façade correspond to the historical Mediterranean prototype, thus creating a serene, harmonious example of public architecture. In the heart of the university campus, the large-scale urban synthesis by the architects Finet and Papayoano comprise dynamic oblong buildings which define the boundaries of successive squares. Corbusier's influence is very apparent. The French Institute, with its clear geometric elements, parallel levels and cylindrical forms, takes its place in the linear axis of Stratou Avenue with regulated disorderliness. At the beginning of the 80s, there was an obvious change in the characteristics of the buildings of Thessaloniki. Utilizing the form of a prism with an inner atrium, the City Hall of Eversmos became a catalyst by introducing an element of urbanization to the then little developed but very dynamic western area of Thessaloniki. The architectural center of the municipality of Thessaloniki, with its light metallic elements, stands out from the line of apartment buildings in Angelaki Street, introducing a high-tech note to the city. The Museum of Byzantine Civilization is one of the most important of Thessaloniki's contemporary buildings. The picture of urban chaos conjured up by the half-finished concrete and brick structures challenges the viewer of this cutting-edge work by Krokos. The excellent realization of the building highlights the thorough processing of texture linked to Greek tradition. The administration building of the Macedonia Thrace Bank shows a particularly civic character that results from an abstractional monumental mood with references to the European eclectic models of the interwar period. The gates of the international fairgrounds of Thessaloniki constitute the completed part of a greater synthesis that aims at the resurrection of the eastern cultural access of Hebra's plan. Clear-cut, minimal volumes with a perforated copper outer shell, the translucence of which alters according to the lighting conditions. The facades of the Austrian Monopoly tobacco warehouse with their dynamic Art Deco decoration, work of the eminent architect Nicopolis, 
have been preserved and are now an integral part of the contemporary Platea shopping center. The railway station, with its obvious civic qualities, is a rational complex that merges abstract classicism and modernism. In the Lawyers' Association building, discrete contemporary insertions upgrade a modest structure from the interwar period. In the Olympian, by the architect Jean Moset, two auditoria sit on the curve of the square behind a fully elaborated version of the Parisian facades of Haybra's plan. Το κτίριο της βιβλιοθήκης, η επέκταση δηλαδή της κεντρικής βιβλιοθήκης στο οποίο βρισκόμαστε τώρα είναι ένα κτίριο που αποτελεί μέρος του συνολικού σχηματισμού των υπό και παρά την γη νέων κτιρίων του Πανεπιστημίου Θεσσαλονίκης που προσπαθούν να καλύψουν μια σειρά από επιτακτικές ανάγκες χωρίς ταυτόχρονα να επιβαρύνουν τον αστικό σχηματισμό του Πανεπιστημίου με νέα κτίρια. Παρόλο λοιπόν ότι είναι ένα κτίριο με στη γη, έχει ενδιαφέρον να δει κανεί εσωτερικά το πόσο μεγάλο και άνετο χώρο και το κυριότερο πόσο φωτεινό χώρο παράγει. The extension of the Faculty of Sciences sets a new urban boundary for the university. In the Exhibition Center, the original Public Power Corporation Pavilion, which has been enriched with successive additions, now houses the activities of the dynamic Macedonian Museum of Contemporary Art. The Lazaristis Monastery, which is one of the first European buildings of the city, despite the unfortunate implementation of the designs, has gained a primary role in a pilot plan to become the cultural center of Western Thessaloniki. The Society for Macedonian Studies building, a complete but conservative synthesis of two successive halls, lies behind a classical, imposing facade. The nearby Officers Club of Thessaloniki, with its hollow facade, differs in its reference to the landmark of the area, the White Tower. The intersected conical solids of the Hellenic Telecommunications Organization Tower succeed in creating a point of reference for the contemporary city, its first high-tech form. In the Vlatavas Monastery, despite the problem of scale, the transfer of forms by using traditional to contemporary materials has created an interesting style interpretation of the anonymous. In the Thessaloniki Concert Hall, the unfortunate choices of site and final elaboration have negated the original intention to express the historical character of the city in a monumental way. The Royal Theatre has preserved the original simple conception of Doxiades. However, the extravagant enlargement on the actual urban face of the seafront has significantly altered the area surrounding the White Tower. The Faculty of Education creates a new distinct point of reference, despite the changes in position and arrangement that occurred during construction. At the Macedonia Palace Hotel, the rectangular grid is externalized in the balcony perimeters. The building remains a victim of standardization, even more apparent because of its scale and position. An adherence to eclectic formation originally emerged in the urban high-rise buildings of the period between the two world wars. The new possibilities of reinforced concrete allowing large openings first made their appearance in stores and office buildings. Eclectic and Art Deco forms coexist in the framework of the cosmopolitan commercial architecture and they have gradually evolved into elements of abstract modernism. 
During the first decades after the war, there was little margin for real expression because of the asphyxiating framework of contractor building for apartments. There are, however, some notable exceptions that fully exhibit composite facade elaboration with light outer shields or grids in the perimeter of the continuous balconies. The structural framework may be offset by openings arranged for effect. In more recent examples, the approaches have been enriched to transcend conventional balconies and glass shields. Inspired elements of graphic origin are sometimes incorporated in the facades. The illustration of the urban high-rise building has been enhanced by references to older urban buildings and the use of processed materials. This house in Panorama can be described as a system of atriums and volumes. An unexpected introvert character is preserved, despite the many flights from it. In the Nicolaides resident, the main element is the interrelation of semi-atriums that are created by removing volumes from a clearly defined shell. The purpose residence is distinguished for the articulation of two independent volumes housing the living and sleeping quarters. The use of visible rough materials places it in the mild, brutalist style. In a different environment in Anapoli, where the memories of tradition are still fresh, it is worth trying to find some contemporary versions and answers to the difficult problem of integration with the local spirit. These residences attempt to overcome the simple morphological movement by adopting a modern vocabulary of terms of abstraction that can adapt better to typological references. In other cases, the new elements are not emphasized. The use and the texture of colors create mild versions of the neo-traditional idiom Contemporary everyday materials and a spirit of abstraction can be acceptable if scale and volume formation are preserved. Light grid elements restore the controlled scale adaptation of openings to the environment.